Welcome everybody to the Job Talk TV show. Of course, I am your host, Dr. Tina, and today I have the wonderful pleasure of having here with me the resume woman that gets <laughs> jobs. I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I've looked again at your bio. I am in awe of the experience that you've had. Susan L. Wright of the <laughs> resume woman that gets jobs done. And actually, her company is named Resumes That Get Jobs Done, Inc. You have been in leadership development programs for two Fortune 100 companies, and I'll name them, AT&T and FedEx. And that is a phenomenal resume that you're bringing to the entrepreneurial job that you have today. And so, you know, the Job Talk TV show is about showcasing people who found their passion professionally and providing services and skills and insights to people who are in pursuit of their passion. So you're, you're, you're checking two blocks for me today. <laughs> Tell me, Susan, your bio, it's extensive. You've had a phenomenal uh, professional experience yourself. Before we talk about what you do today in mm. helping people with resume development, what was that moment that launched you on your path as an entrepreneur? Well, in 2008, um, I was working for Bell South, and AT&T acquired Bell South, and so when they did, uh, everybody that was uh, basically retirement eligible got a beautiful package. And I decided then that I would take that package and do something else with my life. You know, I was still young enough to do that. And uh, I was an English major in college, and I wrote term papers for everybody, and I also did resumes for everybody. And so that's kind of how, it all, you know, the, the concept started. And, um, and I got pretty good at it. I became a student of resumes, and I loved helping people realize, you know, their job, their dream jobs. And so then I went into corporate America, uh, and I had the uh, chance to be in the Leadership Institute for both companies, so I was hiring and training managers and helping them leverage their skill sets so that they could maximize, you know, their job and their careers. And, um, and so after I re retired and I took the package, my daughter worked for an advertising company. And she called me and she says, Mom, you know how you've always wanted to do resumes? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, I've got an ad for you that's going to put you on the map. And of course, she was trying to sell me and it worked. <laughs> I bought an ad and, it, and basically the rest is history. It, it, I'm in four states. You know, I just advertise in the southeast, but I have done resumes for everybody across the U.S. Again, 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 I say on the job talk, serendipity is our best friend. <laughs> A prepared mind is open to great opportunities. So you fell into being the resume lady. I that's, did. That's a wonder, and, and your daughter, I obviously want to know who she is and how I can get a hold of her later for, for some media copy. And, and let me just tell you something. My daughter is my protege, okay? I, I basically helped launch her. She graduated from the University of Alabama in 2007, okay, the year before I retired. And, um, and so she was a marketing major. She wanted to go into business and be a marketeer. And I told her, I said, look, you don't just start in marketing. You know, you have to start in an entry-level job and work your way up the corporate ladder. Yes. So I said, well, you know, you're, you're really cut out for sales. And sales is a great profession for uh, college graduates because you learn the products and services, you get the skill sets, world-class training, then you go s call on small businesses and you learn how they operate and what they do and how they do it and how your products are going to solve their business problems. And so she got hired by an advertising company and she, now she's a director of sales and advertising and making a lot more money than I ever made. <laughs> And not only are you a proud parent, but you also get, as a coach and a resume writer, get to take credit for her success. I do. I do. I do get to talk about my daughters all the time in my professional life, much to their annoyance, uh, because I tell stories from their younger years when their life wasn't so wonderful. But you, I was going to ask you, what is the first step to get started if somebody wants a resume? But you obviously coached your daughter in the steps to the first steps. Exactly. If I came to you today, 
right out of college or in a career transition phase mm -hmm. of my life, what are the first steps I would pursue? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to find a resource. And you know, you can go online, you can Google resume services, or you can go to yellowpages.com. You can, there are a number of resources, and I'm available in, in all of those uh, areas. But the, the thing that you have to do is select at least two companies to really interview because this is not a DIY kind of thing. You know, it's just like if you had tonsillitis, you wouldn't try to, you know, heal yourself. You go to an expert and you make sure that they provide the services that you need. And if the company only provides resume service, then I don't think you want to use them because it's a pretty complex process. You got to have a resume. I, I call it MAC or my, is my, I love acronyms. So I teach my clients how to market themselves, how, and I build an accomplished-based resume that showcases their skill sets and their awards and recognition and chief accomplishments. And finally, and most importantly, is the interview skills. You gotta win the interview to win the job, and companies today are using something called behavior-based interview questions. And so they want specific examples. So I give every client a list of the most frequently asked interview questions, and I have them fill them out. Then I say, now, if you want me to work with you, you can send them back to me, and I'll edit them and make sure that you answered the question, that you have good examples, and then you can practice it you know, on your own. Or you can pay me to be, uh, to do mock interviews, you know, and, and I'll practice with you. I recently had a college student, I had two college students, Ole Miss graduates, and, um, and they were both looking for first-time jobs, and they came to me, and one of them was really just um, excellent. I mean, he didn't need much coaching. But the female needed a little bit more help, and so I did mock interviews. I recorded her, and I played back her responses, and they both landed jobs within 30 days, making from the mid-40s to the high-40s, right out of college. So, again, I know my methods work. And there's no, re no reason to be modest about knowing <laughs> what you know how to do seriously. Right, right. because. For, for, for being an entrepreneur, part of the transaction is people having confidence in your competence. And clearly you're competent, you're very skilled, you're experienced. You've, you've, your career has been bringing you to this point in your career. It has. I started out as a teacher. Once a teacher, always a teacher, you know. And, and I love writing is my passion. And I love helping people land their dream jobs. And this is probably the most rewarding job I've ever had. And, and you know, in retirement, I mean, you obviously have to love it. <laughs> Hold the thought, because loving what you do is critical to the Job Talk TV show. We're going to go for a quick station break, and we shall be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Of course, you are tuned in to the Job Talk TV show, and I am your host, Dr. Tina. Today, I have the wonderful pleasure of being in the presence of Susan L. Wright of Resumes That Get Jobs Incorporated. I, I love your tagline that became your business, and for me, as a promoter of all things entrepreneurial, when you set up your business, did you know you were going into business for yourself? Did you... Did you hire a coach to help you market and develop you, or did it happen? No, I didn't hire a coach. I, I mean, I was a coach. Most, you know, working in the Leadership Institute at both AT&T and FedEx, and training managers and hiring managers, um, I already felt like I had the skill set, and I knew I loved to write, so it was just a beautiful match, you know? So you found your passion. You fell into your passion. It's very fortunate. So you found, your you found your passion. You're very, very fortunate to have done so. 
now this passion is extended to your clients who come to you for coaching and career and resume services. What's the inside scoop on finding where the best jobs are announced? What, what, what's the contemporary notice board? Okay. There, there are a couple of, I have a, a favorite. Um, first is LinkedIn, and that is a business network, and it's a great marketing tool. Now, the, the college graduate that I just helped um, from Ole Miss, um, I encouraged her to, after we finished her resume and her cover letter and she was applying for jobs, I said, go get a professional headshot. She chose to go get a glamour shot because she wanted to look a little more sophisticated just being a college graduate. And then I built a profile for her. And then we also put her career um, objective on there. And no sooner did she get it posted than her phone started ringing off the hook. And she had about five interviews, so she, had a, she actually got two job offers. I love this notion because in, in coaching I always talk about what's your mission statement, what's your vision statement, what's, what's, who are you, what's your objective. Mm -hmm. And so a career objective, say more about that. Uh, well, you know, um, the whole thing about a resume is it's got to be tailored, it's got to be custom to the job. And people just think they can write a generic resume and that it's going to work. And that's not how it works in, in corporate America especially because it's very competitive. So you have to showcase your skill sets. And what I do is I sit down with my clients. After uh, they, they pick, I tell them to pick their top two jobs. Then I align that job description with their skill sets and make sure that they possess the skill sets. And then we, we incorporate, especially when it's young people, you need a career objective. You don't always have to have one, especially if you're a seasoned professional kind of just stands, you know, to reason. But I build, um, my resumes tell a story because I build in a summary of qualifications. And that kind of tells, you know, recently graduate, you know, recent graduate um, with a background in sales, you know, meeting people, understanding their needs and being able to recommend products and services that solve their business problem or whatever. And, and that way, um, you know, everybody knows what, it, what they're seeking. And then I also incorporate in there the skill sets, you know, that you, you once again, you look at the job description, you look at the resume, and you make sure that they come together. So in this coming together, and the Job Talk TV show is also educational for our listeners, and many people learn more from mistakes than they do from doing things well. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest mistakes people make on their resumes? Well, the first thing that m most people do is they write um, a, a resume that basically just uh, outlines their career history. And so they, they describe the jobs that they have been doing. And, and if I'm a prospective employer and I'm looking at that, I'm saying, well, I kind of know what the job is, you know. I can look at a job description. And people don't know how to showcase their, their skill sets and their accomplishments. And so I interview my clients, and we go through their job history, and I ask them, you know, what are your key accomplishments? That's the first question I start with. And you know what? A lot of people, it, it, you know, they, they freeze up. They say, well, I don't really know. <laughs> I tell, I tell all of my clients, I said, you keep a file with all your attaboys, all your promotions, your letters of commendations, your awards, because you need to be able to reach in that drawer and pull them out and show because that's your differentiator. That shows what you've accomplished and that's what employers are looking for. So those who don't do that are missing the opportunity. And I'm going to use a term that you expressed yourself when we'd previously spoken. Um, they miss the opportunity to effectively market themselves. Exactly. How, how does one market oneself as a new college graduate versus being a mid-careerist? Is there a difference? There is a difference, absolutely. But the marketing, you know, the marketing part is, is still, there's, um, you know, LinkedIn is such a great network 
um, and if you're a seasoned professional, for example, and you decide you want to go to work for Coca-Cola or you want to go to work for AT&T, then you can look on that website and you can find people that work for that company. You can find people that are human resources that interview. You can connect with people and you can find commonalities with people like you know where they graduated from college. And so you, what you do is you really research, research, research. Hold the three R's. I think they're very important. We're going to go for a quick station break and okay. we shall be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Of course, you are tuned in to the Job Talk TV show, and I am your host, Dr. Tina. Today, I'm in the wonderful presence of Susan L. Wright of Resumes That Get Jobs, Inc. Susan, before we go any further, remind my viewing audience how they can find out more about your journey to becoming your highest and best self. Well, the best way to find me is on the web. It's www.resumesthatgetjobsinc.com. And you can actually fill out a form on that website, and um, it'll come directly to me, and then we can get started. Or you can just call my telephone number directly. Perfect. That is perfect. Before the break, we were talking about LinkedIn and networking. And networking is so misunderstood on so many levels. Mm -hmm. um, in, in my world, a, a lot of my clients resist networking. They feel it's contrived or um, um, disingenuous. How do you coach your clients through the art of networking? Well, networking doesn't just have to be LinkedIn. Networking is really no more than just connecting with people. And you would be surprised how you can find out about job opportunities from friends and family and colleagues, previous managers. Do you know that I was a school teacher in Savannah, Georgia? and I was in the grocery store on a Sunday afternoon and I ran into my old boss at Bell South and he said what are you doing down here because I had worked at the telephone company during the summers and I said well I'm teaching school and he said well we have a brand new job and we really need women in this job and he said go down to the telephone company and apply for it and I said what's the name of it and he said it's called communications consultant but you just tell them I sent you and that is exactly how I transitioned from being a school teacher to being in sales. That's a wonderful story about serendipity and networking is all about manufactured serendipity. You were, happened to be in the right place at the right time, but we have to put ourselves in the right place at the right Absolutely. time. Absolutely. And you know, I just really believe in divine intervention as well because I feel like that there was something greater for me to do than just teach English and now I have a whole new world open to me and working with clients and coaching them and helping them reach their career uh, objectives and it's it's I love it and so there's no career without succeeding at the interview what's the best way to prepare for an interview okay the best way to prepare is number one take the list of questions I give you that are behavior based and fill them out because uh, when I say behavior-based, you know, companies used to ask just like, well, tell me about yourself or, you know, what's your strength? Or now they want specific examples that demonstrate you possess the skill set. So they might say, uh, well, Dr. Tina, tell me the toughest decision you ever made. How did you make it? And what was the result? Well, if you haven't prepared for that question and you've got two or three people sitting across the desk from you, chances are you're not going to do very well. But if you answer those questions in advance and you prepare for that, you're going to nail it. And my clients say, you're not going to believe this, Susan, but they asked 75% of the questions you asked me and I nailed the interview. It's a wonderful feeling. It's an abs <laughs> Being prepared is the part of every process that people underestimate the importance of being prepared prepare 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 so you've you've done the questions you've prepared for the interview 
what if what if it's a different type of interview? What if it's a, a Skype interview, which is or a panel interview? Are there different ways of preparing? Well, they're still going to ask the same the same basic questions, but I ju I just helped a professor, believe it or not. I had never done a professor, and he had a Skype interview out of a university in New York, and you know I I told him I said you know you've got to what you've got to do in this particular case is because your your long distance is you've got to connect with your interviewers you gotta have good eye contact you can't be fidgety you know you need to look calm cool and collected and and preparation gets you to that place you know it takes the nerves away and uh... and so i skyped with him in advance of his interview you know so i could assess his skill sets and give him some feedback on how he did. See what's going on in the background of his Skype picture, you know, take the puppy calendars off the wall, <laughs> those types of things. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, you know, we, we're, we're just about out of time, so to wrap up the Job Talk TV show, you don't have a job until you master the interview. First impression, in five words or less, how important is it? Critical. One word, perfect. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you Thank on the show you. today. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. I'm Dr. Tina. To know more about what we do, go to thejobtalkradioshow.com, www.com. We will be back very soon, and thank you. I bid you adieu.